Jordan, great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Senator Grassley calls for Lanny Brewer to resign today. Your reaction when you heard it? You know, I think that it's, it's the right call. You know, we've been very careful, the ACLJ and this response, we've been very outspoken about Fast and Furious and, and the, really the cover-up, not that it was just a bad policy, but, I mean, think about it. If the Department of Justice would have come out, um, it, you know, when they started talking about it in February and said, yeah, it was a bad policy, it's wrong, uh, and, uh, it, you know, and, and come right out instead of trying to cover it up, We'd be talking about a bad policy, but certainly not uh, a Washington, D.C. scandal worthy of people uh, resigning or even being fired, as some uh, members of Congress have called for President Obama to do to uh, uh, Attorney General Holder. Uh, but listen, I'm, uh, he, the, the, uh, the criminal director here he uh, at the Department of Justice reviewed this multiple times, sent it to yes. his own Gmail account multiple times, the report that went in, uh, last Feb- in this last February. And that was the report that now he's saying, oh, I actually didn't really read it, and even though it was forwarded to his personal account multiple times. And uh, then it was retracted, you know, December 2nd. The, the whole report saying contained inaccuracies. And I think for people who care about the Second Amendment, there's even more breaking news, you know, as this, we go through these 1,300 pages, because now we see that, that the ATF was using this to justify more regulations yep. on gun purchasers. I mean, the, it, the list goes on. Of, they were using such a bad policy where Americans got killed to, to, uh, to use it to you know, promote more restrictions on, on purchasing firearms. You know, and Wayne LaPierre said that was the agenda from the start. A lot of people are saying, oh, that's just a conspiracy. Hey, you know, but, <laughs> but you're right. There's proof of it. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, I thought it was very interesting, you know, because Grassley was talking about how Brewer, as you said, received four drafts of yep. this February 4th letter where they misled Grassley. And he says, and not only that, he sent a, a follow-up to his staff for saying, hey, great work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and you know what? When you're, when you're a government official and you don't read things, and you say that, and listen, if he read it or not, uh, at least resign. I mean, you, you, you just can't do that in, in real life. I, you know, if he, even breezing through it, you would be able to see if there were inaccuracies, but saying it's great work. And the, the more emails, the more information we get. We know there's a cover-up. The question is, how far up the cover-up cover goes? And, and l- let me tell you, just for everybody listening, any other American, whether you're an organization, a CEO, a person, mm-hmm. uh, someone called to testify, you're know, a baseball player, if you lie to Congress like this, and then 10 months later, 10 months later, say there were some inaccuracies, basically the entire thing, like striking all the provisions, out, you go to jail. Yeah. You don't even just have to resign. You don't have to get fired by your boss. You literally go to jail. It's, it's like perjury to do that at those hearings and submitting that kind of documentation. And this is our Department of Justice, who from the start, instead of just saying, yes, it was a program, yeah. it was a bad program, uh, that's why we stopped doing this provision of the program after the incidents, and, uh, and here's the facts. Instead of doing that, and it would have been a one or two days to talk about, well, this is a bad program, what they created was, which is what these are always about, is a gigantic cover-up scandal going right to the top. And the questions now are, you know, did Eric Holder know enough to, to, about this, and did, uh, did President Obama? And, and so, I mean, think about uh, Secretary Napolitano as well, Department of Homeland Security. They were all giving out these talking points. The question is, were they just given the talking points by someone and they didn't know anything more? Uh, you could question their leadership ability. Uh, you could question their, their uh, you know, whether that's worth resigning over. But I certainly think uh, at, at the level we're going to where you have the, op- the, the head of the criminal division of the Department of Justice saying how great this is and forwarding it to his personal Gmail account uh, multiple times as if he was doing that so he could keep reading through it. I mean, that, that makes some sense, I guess, but taking outside the official world is also a little uh, bizarre and questionable. At, at least, uh, you know, I think what Senator Grassley said is right, the call to resign. Uh, but, but uh, you know, I'm starting to grow in more and more with the chorus of lawmakers who really do think it's time for Eric Holder to step aside. You know, this isn't about people trying to say it's Republican politics and Democrat politics. But again, I go back to it. They're the ones who started the cover-up. They, they just could have answered the questions, and it would have been yeah, they're okay the ones who are saying, politics. this is a witch hunt. You know, yeah, this right. is about politics. You they know? created their own. I mean, they, they really created did. Their own scandal. And you, your group has put out a petition that people can sign. What's been the reaction to it? Yeah, you know, we just started that today because oh, okay. we've, been, we've been weighing in on it a lot. Uh, but we've already heard from, I, I think, almost 10,000 people. I mean, I, I, people are ready for us to kind of engage directly in the sense that 
uh, because we, we're attorneys, because we work with Congress, and we've been just following it closely, commenting in the news about it. Uh, but now, once everybody's had time to sift through these emails, you realize uh, more and more it, it's very unlikely that Eric Holder didn't know what he was saying was a lie. It's, it's obviously the criminal division director knew what he was saying uh, was a lie in these memos. And that, and that really, the, the sad thing about it, not just the, the perjury side or the lying to Congress, um, it's just that, again, if any other American, you'd be in jail. And the second part is that instead of talking about, wow, this was a bad program in their emails, we should really stop this. We need to really come out and condemn what was happening. They but were I got to ask you how to cover it up. What is it going to take? You've got members of the Senate. You've got members of the House. You've yeah. got Republicans on the campaign trail. You've got a petition out there yeah. all saying you got to resign. I mean, and, and, you know, we had on Congressman Walsh that he said, I think we're at a point where we need a special prosecutor. But there's no indication from this yeah. White House or this administration that they're hearing any of this. It, it, it's very bizarre to me because it is becoming a I think more people, more Americans uh, have to speak out because, again, it, you know, it's kind of, we heard about it. Now we got the document dump. And now, you know, even CBS News, this is not like outside the mainstream media world pouring through these documents and saying, whoa, this stuff is this is a lot different than what they were telling Congress 10 months ago and over the last uh, 10 months. I, I think, you listen, uh, you know, we've got our petition at ACLJ.org. People need to call their members of Congress. And, and I think, listen, I, I, I just, I, it's, it's bizarre to me because if you're President Obama and you're about to face reelection, and, uh, and just for political purposes alone, which he seems like pretty much, you know, a very political animal, uh, like a lot of politicians, why are you so tied to keeping Eric Holder around unless the whole, the whole you know, House of Cards crumbles if he goes, you know, yeah. so to speak, and, and he's not, you know, it, it's just, it's bizarre. Usually presidents, when someone's caused, caused this much trouble on their own and their own department heads have, uh, heads roll and justifiably. And I think yeah. people would have welcomed that move by President Obama as an indication and an acknowledgement that we may not agree with him on all of his policies and issues, but at least when it's something so egregiously wrong and bad and a cover-up and illegal, he, he takes swift action. But instead, it's, you know, he made that comment in March that whoever was responsible would be held accountable. And, you know, we're, we're almost to the new year. Yeah, and Cheryl Atkinson from CBS has been on top of this. She's been working this story, yep. you know. But I know there's members of Congress who said, "Where's the mainstream? Where are you guys on this? Uh, where, you know, if this was anybody else, if this was President George Bush, this would headline oh, every God single." Lord. day. And you know that yeah. you do a radio show, and I'm sure yeah. you're hearing from people they're saying the same thing. Yeah, I mean, listen, if if if, if remember the scandal, I mean, they call it a scandal when when the Department of Justice under the Bush administration, Alberto Gonzalez, the Attorney General, had had the uh, U.S. attorneys who serve at the bequest of the president. They are, they are not appointed for lifetime or nonpartisan. They're appointed by president. He fired them. And he had them fired because they disagreed with the ideological positions of the Bush administration. And that was a scandal that they fired people for political, yeah. they said political purposes, uh, even though that was within the president's total right under the, under the law and under the authority that, that uh, the law that granted the U.S. attorneys being created by Congress was that they serve the president, they serve the DOJ. If DOJ doesn't want their service anymore, they say, we don't want your service anymore. Thank you, thank you very much for what you've done for your country. Move along. This is, uh, again, that was a scandal. But when you have guns being given to Mexican drug cartels who work with terrorist organizations, we know that. I mean, from and a our dead own border DOJ, patrol agent. That they work with, right, they work with Hezbollah backed by Iran. The guns are found at murder scenes. And that was the purpose of the program, too, which is so, so scary, is that when the tracking devices failed, the electronic tracking never really worked, they said, okay, we'll still do the program. We'll just find the guns at the scene of the crime. When you give out AK-47s, the scene of the crime is people are dead when you give it to drug cartels. And not just, I mean, think about it. How would we feel if Mexico sent in weapons to trace to figure out who the people that were yeah. working with their drug people were, and, just, and then those weapons killed Americans? You'd be outraged. Well, they've killed Mexican citizens, too. I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's talking about bad, we get criticized for our conservative foreign policy. This is the worst kind of uh, smuggling guns in. Now we're hearing about the DEA laundering money in to purchase the guns. So not only did we get the guns in, we actually gave them the money to buy the guns. Yeah. And, uh, and it has not led to a single arrest, not one arrest of a high-ranking cartel official. Yeah. Well, you know what? We'll see what happens tomorrow when Holder goes up there one more time. I don't expect anything, but we'll keep our eyes and see what goes on. 
Absolutely. You know, I think this is going to be a very interesting hearing. He's backtracked about as much as possible. But I imagine, I think, you know, uh, Congressman Ice and others, they really are just fed up uh, with being told lies for a year, you know, hours and hours and documents and document pages and pages of lies, and then hearing, you know, uh, a week ago, oh, sorry, those were all inaccurate. Yeah. All righty. Well, we'll see uh, uh, what happens, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon, I hope. Sounds great. Thanks all for right. having me on. Thanks.